Hi, my name's Rachel and welcome to Online Church this morning. We're so glad you could join us at C3 Reach Miranda. Um, if you're new to our online platform, um, there's a few cool functions in the bottom right hand corner of your screen if you're on a computer or just at the bottom if you're on a phone. We've got um, a chat column so you can just pop a message in there, say hello, let us know that you're watching um, and engage you know, throughout the whole service if you'd like. If you prefer to just watch, um, in the bottom right hand of the screen, there's also a little arrow button and you can click that to expand your screen. Um, also in the top right hand corner, you'll find ways to give, um, ways to see the C3 Ride kids content, um, ways to connect in, let us know that you're new here or let us know that, you've, um, that you're wanting to connect in. So we hope you really enjoy this service and uh, I'll see you at the end. Bye.
God who's never 
peace of Rasloam. Thank you, Jesus. You peace, you peace, you peace over us now, Jesus. Over us now, Jesus. Peace in our homes, peace in our lives, peace in our work. Bring your peace that passes all understanding in everything, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Remember who you are. You are Lord Almighty. You are God. You are God. You are God. We remember who you are. You're the God who's never Hi everybody, it's C3 Reach Miranda. Today we're just going to talk to you very briefly about our favourite topic, the love of God. Uh, we'll start with a Bible verse. 1 John 4, 16 tells us that God is love and that whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. Verse 19 goes on to say, we love because he first loved us. As Christians, we're passionate to show the love of the Father in how we lead our lives. We carry his love and we receive our identity from him. We're loved, we're embraced, we're 100% accepted because he says that you are my son and daughter and I'm well pleased. It's not about our performance, it's about his love. So we wanna be really immersed in his love. So we'd really like to encourage you to feel his love and seek his presence first thing in the morning. Just pause for a minute and soak in his love before you start your day, before you do anything, before you get out of bed. Um, anytime you pray in the next few weeks, think about, just think about God and his love. Ask the Father for a deep, deep encounter and to fill you with his love. This will change your life as we've experienced. When we carry his love, we get the awesome opportunity to live as Jesus would live today. That's all for now. Bye. See ya.
and she helps kids learn. She also helps us. She's a great teacher and a great mom. We love you, Mommy. Happy World Teachers Day. Hi C3 family, just wanted to give a quick shout out to my parents, Wayne and Janelle Griffin, who are both teachers. My dad used to work at Dinnerborough, and my mum is currently serving as the Visual Arts Coordinator at Thomas Cecil and Anglican College. They are enthusiastic and committed to education, and really love what they do. I know they have made an incredible impact on students over the years, and my brothers and me. Thank you both for your dedication and support to students so that they can be the best they can be. And I also want to thank all the teachers watching. We may not always show it, but we really do appreciate what you do. During COVID especially, teachers have done it rough, having to stay up most lights, learning software, preparing quality lessons or marking assessments. And so it is especially important that right now we take the time to acknowledge all those who help secure the next generation's education. Four plus one is sixteen. Um, how many pints of iced tea are left in the pitcher? I'm so scared because I fall off my chair. So I'm gonna go with the front and then send me now. It's not going good. My mom is getting stressed out. Mama's tired. I I like. Starting just quickly by breathing in. I never thought I'd say this, but I kind of miss school. Teachers, I mean, y'all are gift to people. I thank you so much for what you're doing. Their investment into our children is beyond what we can even imagine. Appreciate all that you do. Hi everyone and welcome to C3 Reach Miranda Online. Well, now that it's daylight savings time, spring is definitely here. I'm enjoying the air temperature warming up, especially at night. Um, and all around our area, the bottle brush trees are flowering and I, I just think they look spectacular, you know, against the, the green leaves and the really blue sky. After some soaking rain the past few weeks, the grass is also really lovely and green. I'm actually on a Facebook page called One Day Closer to Rain where farming families post photos from their properties. Over the past couple of months, um, there's been some incredible comparison photos of the land which is now lush and green compared to the same time last year when it was dry and brown with huge dust, stormed free, dust storms frequently passing through. Our neighbour uh, has been doing some work in our garden over the past few months and has told us, as my dad has told us in the past, that everything isn't always what it seems in the garden. To use an old aphorism from Shakespeare, all that glitters is not gold. If you've been to our place before, you'll know that we have a large area of lawn at the front of our house. So when I sit and look at the lawn, uh, not really being much of a gardener myself, it all looks lovely. You see, to me, the grass looks, well, just green. There are sections of the grass that are brighter than others, and in the bright green sections, um, the tufts of grass are actually thicker and look a lot healthier than the other areas. So imagine my surprise to find out that these thick, bright green sections of the lawn are actually weeds. They're a type of grass, but they're certainly not the Sir Walter Rayleigh grass that we laid about eight years ago. All that glitters is not gold. Weeds can sometimes uh, grow through even a crack in the concrete, as I'm sure we've all seen. They're persistent and sometimes they're really tough to eliminate, but that shouldn't stop us from getting out a garden tool and um, getting right down to the root of the weed, although I have to say, I won't take credit for almost any of the weeding that's done at our place. But if we don't get down to the root um, and just pull it out superficially, it'll be back in no time at all and probably even bigger than before. 
Earlier in the year, I did actually help Brennan with some weeding out the back of our place, and it was actually really satisfying to pull the weeds um, right from their roots. You know, you can almost hear that crack as it, as it breaks free um, from the dirt and maybe even the other plants that are trying to, to grow in that area. In the parable of the sower, Jesus describes the heart responses of people when they hear the truth of God's word. Many of you would be familiar with the parable. The, the seeds that fell on the footpath represent people who didn't receive God's word at all. The seeds that fell on the rocky soil didn't have deep roots and represent people who at first heard the word with joy but later fell away when you know, faced with temptation or just the, um, the troubles of the world. The seeds that fell among the thorns, I think, are similar to the garden weed analogy um, that I've been referring to. In Luke chapter 8 from verse uh, 14, we read, The seeds that fell among the thorns represent those who hear the message, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the cares and riches and pleasures of this life. And so they never grow into maturity. In verse 15, it goes on to say, And the seeds that fell on the good soil uh, represent honest, good-hearted people who hear God's word, cling to it, and patiently produce a huge harvest. In the Passion Translation, uh, the same verses read, The seed that falls into the weeds represents the hearts of those who hear the word of God, but their growth is quickly choked off by their own anxious cares, the riches of this world, and the fleeting pleasures of this life. This is why they never become mature and fruitful. The seed that fell into good, fertile soil represents those lovers of the truth who hear it deep within their hearts. They respond by clinging to the word, keeping it dear as they endure all things in faith. This is the seed that will one day bear much fruit in their lives. In these verses, Jesus describes three types of weeds that can spring up in our lives and overtake the good seeds that have been planted in us. The first type of weeds that Jesus refers to is anxious cares, which have also been described as the worries of the world or the anxieties of this age in another translation. These anxieties can cause us to be distracted or drawn in other directions. You know, of course, some of our anxieties are very real and the Lord invites us to cast all our cares upon him because he cares for us. He doesn't expect us to face our challenges alone and he promises to be with us always. But in addition to the challenges in our own personal lives, we can sometimes get caught up in the worries of the world or the anxieties of the age and they start to consume us. I think that we need to be careful that we don't go down rabbit holes with these issues and get tangled up in them to the point that they're starting to crowd out the word of God that's been planted in our hearts. The simplicity and the power of the gospel of Jesus keeps us grounded and the Holy Spirit within us helps us to produce good fruit that lasts. I get the sense that when we let the weeds of the anxieties of the age overtake us, instead of being patient, Become, we become increasingly frustrated. Instead of being peacemakers, we become increasingly agitated. And instead of being kind, we become increasingly judgmental. I think more than ever, it's important for us to cling to the word and not the world. Now, the second type of weeds that Jesus refers to are the riches of this world. And of course, this isn't saying that having money is a bad thing. Instead, it's about where our focus is. Having money with a kingdom focus enables us to be a blessing to many. So I believe it's important that we ask God to bless us so that we can be a blessing. When we recognise that God's our provider um, and he's the one who supplies our needs, we keep our eyes on him. It's when we get consumed by a need to always have more um, and to trick ourselves into believing that wealth is somehow going to make us happy, that I think we're allowing these types of weeds to take hold in our lives. So let's keep a careful watch out for what I call weeds of greed <laughs> that might be growing up um, in the garden of our hearts. The third type of weeds that Jesus refers to are the fleeting pleasures of this life. 
Of course, you know, we all need time to rest and play and to have interests and hobbies in our lives. But I believe what Jesus is referring to here is when we spend too much of our time being consumed with so-called pleasures that aren't healthy for us. There's so much messaging and advertising in our culture that tells us that we just need to look out for number one, for ourselves, that we should indulge and not worry about, our, um, you know, about the consequences. You know, just think about the array of online offerings from pornography to gambling to businesses that encourage married people to have affairs. Or there's you know, the more subtle messaging that can lead us to have a consumer mindset. Um, and for us to get fixated on clothes or cars or even careers. Again, there's nothing wrong with clothes, cars or careers, but it's when they become a type of idol in our lives that we run into trouble. I think of them like the weeds on our front lawn that disguise themselves as grass. If we let weeds like these grow in our hearts, they can easily take over and deceive us into thinking that we're entitled to have anything and do anything. The Apostle Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 12 in the NRSV, all things are lawful for me, he says, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. And other translations say, I won't be a slave to anything or I won't be mastered by anything. So let's keep a careful watch over anything in our lives that's starting to dominate us or take control in any way. We need to remember that as followers of Jesus, we belong to him and that to be his ambassadors, his representatives here on the earth, we want to be producing the best kind of fruit possible, like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Of course, these are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And as Paul writes in Galatians 5.23, against these things, there is no law. In fact, these are the seeds that we need to actually feed in our lives. Of course, what we feed will grow and what we grow will produce that particular kind of fruit. I think just about the worst type of flower um, to have in your garden is an onion weed flower. I don't know if you agree with me, um, but you know, onion weed are just notoriously difficult to get rid of. They're still a flower, but not only do you then have a weed that's incredibly hard to eliminate, it's now grown the ability to reproduce itself. The flowers seed and then they start sowing all on their own. If we leave weeds of the anxious cares of the age or the riches of this world or life's fleeting pleasures to grow on the inside of us unchecked, then not only are they going to crowd out the good things that God's producing in our lives, the weeds are also going to start multiplying. And we don't want that, do we? Instead, let's take the opportunity wherever we can to weed and feed. Let's weed out the actions and attitudes in our lives that aren't producing good fruit and keep feeding ourselves with the word of God so that we do produce the fruit of the Spirit and that, so that we're a blessing to God and a blessing to others. You know, we can invite the Lord to help us with this too um, because there are always blind spots that we're not necessarily aware of. And I think this is where it's important as well um, for us to be in a community of faith because we can, in love, encourage one another and also, as I say, in love, not in judgment, sometimes just point out the blind spots that might be in each other's lives. Two scriptures that come to mind um, that we could really turn into a, a prayer for God to help us weed and feed this spring um, are Psalm 139, right at the end from um, verse 23, and Psalm 51. So Psalm 139 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. And Psalm 51 verse 10 says, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit in me. You know, it's only through Jesus that we can truly have a clean heart before God. But it's still up to us 
to keep an eye out for the weeds that grow up in our hearts and minds. We need to be prepared to do some weeding ourselves, um, on ourselves every now and again. You know, and just like those weeds in our garden, like onion grass that are a pest and, you know, we just want to give up on sometimes and let run wild, let's not give up, but remind ourselves that we're all on a journey. If we just keep leaning into Jesus and stay close to him, abide in him, we'll get rid of those weeds before they take root and we'll continue to produce grace and peace and love from our lives that, as I say, blesses God and blesses others. As Paul reminds us in Galatians 6 verse 9, so let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. So enjoy your weeding and feeding this spring. Why don't we pray together? Lord, we thank you um, that you are the great gardener, the great shepherd of our hearts. Lord, and uh, Lord, we thank you that, you know, as your word of truth um, is being planted uh, on the inside of us, Lord, that um, you'd open our spiritual eyes, Lord, to see um, and, and, and take out, weed out, Lord, those attitudes and actions, Lord, that don't match up, Lord, um, with, with your will for our lives, Lord, and, and um, help us, Lord, to instead be producing um, the fruit of the Spirit um, from you know, our attitudes and actions, Lord, so that we're a blessing to you and a blessing to others. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks for being a part of church wherever you are right now. We hope you really enjoyed that message. Right now, this is a moment between you and God. And I'd love to ask you, do you know Jesus? Have you invited him in? Have you given your life to him? You know, Jesus says this in the Bible. He says, whoever tries to find their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. You know, maybe in this season, you're just trying to hang on to life. You're just trying to get through. You're just trying to keep it all together. But when we give our life, when we surrender our life to Jesus, then we find His life. We receive eternal life. And right now, all you need to do to accept Jesus into your life, to be saved, is to believe. The Bible says that when we believe in our heart, we're made right with God. And when we declare our faith, He saves us. So right now, wherever you are, God's with you. Believe that He's with you. Believe that He sent Jesus for you. Believe what Jesus has done. And believing it in your heart, I would love for you to make a declaration of faith. Lift your hand up wherever you are. God can see it. And click the button to respond in, in, a, in a declaration of faith. And I'll lead us in a prayer right now. You can pray with me wherever you are. Why don't we all pray, whether you've prayed this before or not. Dear God in heaven, thank you that you love me. Thank you that you sent your son Jesus for me. Jesus, thank you that you lived for me, you died for me, and you rose for me. Thank you that you have come to give me life. I'm sorry for living life my way. Sorry for, for being number one in my own life. Sorry for my sin. Forgive me, cleanse me, wash me clean, make me new. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. You are my Lord. Help me to follow you. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Please reach out, connect with us wherever you are so that we can help you in your new journey with Jesus. Jesus loves you. We love you. God bless.
Church fam, thanks so much for watching this morning. Um, before we go, I just thought I'd re reiterate a couple of things that Pastor Joe said in her message um, that actually tie in really nicely with giving. And uh, she mentioned about Jesus um, warning about kind of the riches of this world. Um, and as she said, money, not a bad thing, really important thing, enables us to be a blessing to others. But it's when it becomes the focus um, of our lives that we get into a, a bit of murky water. So, um, you know, as we give this morning, I just wanted to encourage you to make Jesus the center of your world and the center of your finances. And um, as we give to him this morning, he will um, bless us and uh, allow us to be a blessing um, in return. And so there's a few ways to give. There's some options coming up at the bottom of the screen. And you can also click in the top right hand corner of the screen, there's a give button and that'll take you to our details on our website. Thank you so much um, if you've given online already and for those who've been giving through this time particularly as well. And um, if you're new or you're visiting from another church, please don't feel obliged to give at all. 
um, but you're certainly welcome to do so. So I hope you guys have an amazing week. Um, catch up with someone, grab a coffee, go for a walk, enjoy some sunshine. Stay well and we will see you same time, same place next weekend. Bye.